What's going on guys, Balkan Architect here and in today's tutorial I'm going to be talking about modeling components in place. So components in Revit you can load them in as uh, just separate families or you can model them in place. And I see a lot of confusion over here, uh, people using in place components for things that shouldn't be done as in place components and then they have a lot of trouble uh, later on where when they have to use it in other projects or in other cases they use regular families instead of uh, in-place components and then it takes uh, a lot of time to model those and um, it's it's really hard and it takes well it takes too much time and it's a, a really big headache so I wanted to create a tutorial just to explain how in-place components work when to use them when not to use them what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of, uh, of using those and how to create some in-place components so that's what this tutorial is going to be all about now the project that that I'm going to be using for just demonstration purposes is one that I've created in my Simple House in Revit course. It's a five hour course and it's available on my Patreon, first link in the description of this video. And there I have a lot of uh, uh, more content on some advanced Revit topics. So if you're interested, check it out. Also, you can find all of my Revit project files as well as one-on-one -on -one tutoring if that's something you need. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's get straight into the tutorial. Let's first start off by explaining the component tool. So the component tool is located here on the architecture tab uh, on the build panel. Uh, and the component tool basically allows you to insert any families that are not uh, your regular system families in Revit. So these are component families. System families are the ones like the walls and the ceilings and the floors and the curtain systems, things like that, the stairs. Those are system families and they can only be assembled and created within your project. Now the component families are all of the component families that are here in the, inside of the component option and also we have the uh, doors and windows that also uh, are component families but they have their own dedicated uh, buttons and shortcuts. Now components are usually reserved for furniture, plumbing fixtures, things like that uh, that you use uh, within your model. Maybe side components, uh, elements like that. Uh, now for uh, placing these uh, we have the option to place a component and then we have the uh, model in place option that we're going to be talking about uh, within this uh, tutorial. Tutorial. Now let's first go over the place the component option. So you basically click there. Here we have all of the families that are loaded in, all of the uh, component families. So here, as you can see, we have all of those. And then you can just select one of those, like this desk, and then you can just place it within the model. Now these families are separate files. So if you go here into edit family, you're going to see that this is a separate file. And let me just close this off. Uh, and if you, you can just copy this around, you can load it into different projects, you can just play around with that. And if you decide to go into edit family and make some changes to this family, uh, usually uh, the rest of these families will follow that change. So basically the change will be applied to each instance of that family, depending of course on the change, or if it's maybe a just a change of the instance parameter, then only one of these would change. Uh, but anyways, let's uh, delete this. So when do you use a uh, component and when do you use a uh, model in place? Well, if you want to use some component like furniture, so let's go here in the floor plan. Here we have a simple chair. Uh, so this is a sofa chair. It, this is something that you can reuse in future projects. You can create a family like this and then just use it in one project after the other. And it's something that can be reused a, a, a lot of the time. It's a simple standalone family. So this is something that should be modeled as a family and then loaded into the project and placed as a component. Now modeling in place is reserved for elements that are project specific. So any additional geometry that's going to be specific to that project should be modeled in place just because it's not something that you will be able to transfer over to other projects. So it makes sense to model it just uh, in the inside of that project. Also a second reason for modeling in place is the fact that you can use the project geometry like your walls, your roofs, your floors, things like that as reference. So for example if you want to create something uh, maybe you want to have some sort of a sun 
cover uh, maybe some sun shade for example in this area uh, it's really easy to use uh, that model in place option so for example I'm just going to go here to component model in place and then here uh, first we have to categorize this so let's say this is a, a generic model now that's the most generic way that you can categorize this but of course we have many more options now I'm going to talk about the impact of this uh, categorization uh, a bit later on but for now let's just create a simple family like this uh, just a simple generic model click OK now here I suggest you name it uh, correctly just don't leave it as a generic model let's call this one Sun shade and then click enter there we go now we can use the the rest of this model as reference so I'm just going to go here to set work plane then go with the pick a plane option and then pick this wall here just like that and then I can create extrusions along uh, that wall so I can go here maybe like that maybe go with a rectangle create a simple extrusion like this maybe then copy it so let's copy it maybe once like that and then go to copy with the uh, multiple option let me try that again so copy select this uh, endpoint as reference so where we grab it there and like this I can copy it multiple times maybe like this so we just copy it alongside this wall and when I hit finish I can extend it and I can just make sure that I extend it all the way to the other wall so when we do something like this okay I guess we went a bit too far So uh, as you can see now, it's kind of hosted on that face of the wall. So it's perfectly fitting in this spot here on this project. Now, usually you're not going to get a project with a similar opening like this. So this is something that's really specific to this project. Now we can just go ahead and change the material, maybe do some uh, wood material for this. Let's type in wood, maybe birch, and just hit finish model. And there we go, we have our in-place element. So there we go, works perfect. Now, uh, also, you will you would use these in-place families if you want to edit some of the existing families or make some changes uh, that can be done using these uh, in-place components. So, for example, we have this wall over here. Now, we can add some sweeps to those or reveals to that wall if we want to edit it. So, for example, here on architecture, under wall, we have a wall reveal. So, we can do something like that. And as you can see, it makes a horizontal opening, but it's very uniform and uh, it's fairly simple simple you can change the profile a little bit but it's usually either horizontal or a vertical opening or a profile but let's say you want to do something that's a bit different a bit wilder so for something like that we can use in place components so let me just open up this drop menu and go to model in place and here uh, now this is where that categorization comes uh, comes in in place or when is it really important if I go ahead and select it as a wall Revit will recognize it as a wall and it will be able to edit this existing wall with our new geometry so if I just hit open and let's call this one wall uh, wall avoid so let's just click like this wall void hit enter now I can just go here to set work plane and let's go with the pick a plane option and now I can choose this here uh, this here face of the wall and now we can sketch out a void inside of this uh, wall that suits our needs so for example let's go here to void forms and let's go with the void extrusion and here I'm just going to do a circle like this and then let's see let's do another circle here on top something like that and then or maybe let's make it a bit smaller like 30 maybe 40 move it up a little bit and then you can just play around with this shape I'm just going to go with rotate and copy and let's place the center of rotation here let's rotate it around by I don't know something like 45 degrees then we can do both of these let's rotate place copy let's find the center here okay now let's go for 90 degrees 
Now let's select both of these and then do the same thing again. Rotate, copy, place. And let's go all the way around. There we go. So we can create something that looks like a flower or something like that. And then you can just go with the split element tool and then it will take a, a bit of splitting and then using trim and extend to kind of trim that together. But in the end, you can get a sort of a, a flower shape or something like that. So for example, here uh, you get the point. Let's just go all the way around like this. So what I'm going to do now is just delete the center circle just uh, for uh, just for now, or I can just select it and then go control C, then get rid of it, hit finish. And then let's see, okay, this is currently at 25 centimeters. I think that's a bit too much. So let's go with 10, hit enter. Then you can go here to cut geometry. You select the wall and then just because this is categorized as a wall, uh, it will just kind of cut through it. So there we go. We have that kind of outside line. And now I can go back to create and then go back to void extrusion and just go control V. Let's just leave this at the same place and then hit finish let's see finish there we go and now this one can be at 20 there we go now again I'm going to go here to cut geometry select the wall select the void there we go finish model and there we go we have a flower <laughs> within this wall Okay, now let's get back to this uh, original family that we have created. Now, as you remember, this is a generic model. And when you select it here in properties, it says a generic model. And now this is really important to note because when creating schedules, it's going to use the category in order to place it within a schedule. So for example, uh, if I create a new generic models schedule like this, as you can see, it says here sunshade. Now let me get rid of that schedule and maybe create a new one just to demonstrate how that works. So here in the project browser, you have your schedules. You can just right click and go new schedule. And here, if I scroll down and uh, let's search for generic models, there we go. Hit open and let's just do the family and type like that. So this will be the only scheduled field. You get a schedule that has all of the generic models or all of the families that are categorized as generic models. And here we have our sun shade. Now, if you decide to go back to your model, uh, you can change that category. So you can always go here into edit in place. Uh, and then here on the properties, we have the option to family category uh, and parameters. And when you check that, you can change the family category. So I can change this maybe to something like structural framing because th those look like beams or maybe roof or something like that, just because it's kind of covering everything. So if I categorize this as a roof, click OK. And then it says family roofs. And if I hit finish, Whenever I select it, it's going to say roofs and then one, just because that's one family. But if we go back to this schedule, now, as you can see, we don't really have that sunshade family here anymore. So just be careful uh, when categorizing your families, just because Revit is going to place it in a schedule. Okay, so that's pretty much it for uh, this quick tutorial on uh, on these components and model in place components. I hope it was useful and I hope you have learned something new and please tell me in the comment section below do you use in place components, when do you use them and do you find this tool useful. Also if you want this uh, project file, this uh, little house that I used or if you want to access all of my advanced uh, Balkan architect courses, I've got over 40 hours of content up on my Patreon. First a link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I'll be back in a couple of days with a new tutorial. Have a nice day.